Hello and Whoa. welcome back to the garage. As ever, I'm John and that's Kieran. Confirmed. We're from Make It Better and today we are continuing our series on beginner bike maintenance. So one of the things we're going to look at today is electrics and we're going to introduce our little friend multimeter and some of the things that you can be doing with it. Yeah, we've got the Honda CG125 and Suzuki Address 110 as in all the previous videos. So let's crack on right now. So you're probably wondering what the heck a multimeter is. And Kieran's got a multimeter right here. Uh, it is a nice little box of tricks that measures various things, including amperage, uh, wattage, voltage, resistance, and all, kind, all kinds of things that you don't need to know about right now. For our purposes, we're just going to be looking at voltage. Now, Kieran, what's a multimeter cost? Uh, it's about 20 quid. They do vary in price, but you don't need to spend a lot. But uh, it's well worth doing because it will figure out a lot of different things that could be wrong with your bike. It is the kind of thing that comes in handy more or less all the time. On so multi-occasions. If you ever plan on fixing your own bike, get yourself a multimeter. Right, let's go and look at batteries. Okay, let's have a look at batteries then. Um, this is a motorbike battery. This is also a motorbike battery, about that one? and that one is also a motorbike battery, and that's generally about the size that they are. And even though they come in different sizes, they all more or less do the same thing, which is to help start the bike and run some of the electrical gubbins that are on there. Um, we do have similarities all, all of them, so we've got a positive battery terminal and a negative battery terminal, and some powers in there some volts which we are going to measure now so let's get the multimeter and do some measuring now working with a 12 volt system we're going to use the 20 20 what Kieran 20 squirrels no you BAFTA nominated goon <laughs> it's 20 volts now you've got your red to your positive and your black to your negative that's the job now these are old batteries uh, that we're testing and that is way too low with a 12 volt system 12 is your absolute minimum for it to do its job so we want a bit more juice than 12 to be able to get that bike started and get it running no winners just so you know what a good battery looks like i measure the van battery it's been on charge and that comes in at 13.2 volts so even wow. though it's a 12 volt system you can have slightly more than 12 volts on a full full charge now there's absolutely no reason why you can't do this on your bike you don't have to take your battery off to do this just find your battery wherever it is on the suzuki it's underneath the front panel and on the cg125 it's over underneath the side panel over but it's just the side panel. yeah it's over underneath the side panel but it's just the same process it's just a case of putting the black probe onto the negative terminal red probe onto the positive terminal and reading the voltage which i can uh, see you, you need to do a bit of a run on this i do i've not taken this out in a while it's 10.82 so let's find out will that start the bike Well there you are, this is a real world situation and you can see my battery is not charged enough to start the bike. Um, it's resting there about what, 10.5 volts is that Kieran? Dropped a little, yeah. And you can see when I put the ignition on, hold on, it drops down to 7.6 something and still dropping so that oh, is no. what you would call an undercharged battery. I'm pretty sure the battery's fine so it's just going to need a charge. Now with a battery that's a little bit undercharged, it is sometimes possible, if you've got one, to use a kickstart. Now this bike does have a kickstart, so we're going to try that. Conversely, the Honda CG125, that particular model of it, does not have a kickstart. So if this were to happen on that bike, you can either charge it or bump start it. We'll not get into that at this moment. So, let's see if we can kick this one into life. And the answer is, no, we're gonna have to charge it. But that gives us a good opportunity to show you how to charge your battery. So we're gonna take this one off and go back in the garage. Taking the battery off is normally pretty simple. In this case, there's a metal bracket 
which holds the battery in and then the um, terminals onto the battery itself so when you're removing this as Kieran's doing here start with the negative terminal remove the bolt and all the leads off of that so that there's nothing attached to it and then move over onto the other side and do the positive one and there we go that is one battery removed here we are back in the garage then and we've got the battery off as you can see and we've also got the battery charger which is not plugged in at the moment so we're going to attach the cables from the battery charger to the battery so that's red to positive there we go and black to negative and then my good friend Kieran is going to plug that in for us And as you can see, the display on this one's come up. They're all a little bit different, and that's saying 10.6, which is what the multimeter said. Uh, on this particular charger, you just have to press this button until you get to the right mode. You can see there's different things there, but we just need the motorbike one. And you can see it flashes, and it should start to charge that as we speak. So all we have to do now is leave that for a while until we get the right amount of charge. So what is the right amount of charge? Well a fully charged battery when it's off the charger should be about 12.7 volts. If you get down to 12 volts you're about half charge and if you get below 11.7 volts then really you should be charging it or running it or something like that. If you get below 10.5 volts then there's possibly a problem with your battery or you've got some kind of drain on your system which is just flattening it completely. Uh, but as a general rule if you've got at least 12 volts then you're probably golden. This being YouTube, we don't actually have time to wait for that to charge. So just pretend this is a fully charged battery and we'll just move on. Okay, cool. So what we're doing is we are putting all the terminals back in where they need to be. And in terms of the positive and negative, we're gonna attach the positive lead first and then the negative. And we do that so that we're not got sparks flying everywhere when you attach the positive. If you do it the other way around, then the circuit is effectively live and you can become a part of that circuit. You get sparks. It's quite terrifying. Um, don't do it that way. Remember, attach the positive first and then the negative. Ta-da! Some internet magic has occurred. And as you can see, this uh, fully charged battery has started the bike. And you can no doubt see as well on the multimeter here that we are idling at about 12.28, 12.3 volts, something like that. Um, but what happens is you'll use the battery to start the bike, which uses a little bit of power. And then as you're riding along, the revs increase. And as the revs increase, so does the amount of power being transferred into your battery. Um, if you get to this point and the increase in revs makes no difference to the amount of voltage going to the battery, you've probably got a fault with your charging system. Uh, but unfortunately that's a whole different video for a whole different day so now we're going to move on we have a good healthy battery with a full charge but what if that power isn't getting to the bike it could well be the fuses now this one has a range of different ones for things like lights and horns and whatever else but the main one tucked up here could be the culprit if that's had too much power go through and melted it then we're gonna to have to replace it. And it's always handy to have some spares available just to get you out of a tricky spot. One last thing we want to mention then is earth connections. Earth connection? And don't worry, we've not turned into hippies. We are talking about electrical earth connections. Now, an earth connection is the thing that completes the circuit. So you've got the battery and then power going to a component and then from that component back again. Uh, and it's basically that back end of that system. So we're gonna have a look on the engine and I'll show you the earth lead. Electrics can be a little bit complicated and we're not going to go into too much depth on these videos But one little beginner tip is to check your main earth lead Which is this one just here It goes from the negative terminal on the battery and comes out here and joins in this case to the back of the starter motor But on your bike somewhere on the engine Now if that lead is broken or rusty it can cause all kinds of problems with your electrical system because eventually all the electrical components earth through that point and if it's not quite right then neither will any of the components be so the thing to do is to remove that there's just a bolt at one end and a bolt at the other end and to check uh, that it's not broken 
and if it is replace it and check it's not rusty and if it is you can clean it up and stick it back on so with a good earth lead you can cure quite a lot of electrical problems that concludes our little overview of basic motorbike electronics uh, it can be a tricky subject but hopefully we've provided you with a few tasty knowledge nuggets to get you underway yeah it can be a quite a complicated subject electrics so if we've left you with more questions and answers which is a very distinct possibility please feel free to leave a comment below and we'll try and get back to you or come and find us on our own youtube channel which is make it, make better. it better just come and have a look for us and do not forget there will be more of these excellent and very informative beginners more to cycle maintenance videos coming soon and hopefully we will see you on, on the, the next, next one. one see you later